I'm depressed and nobody knows it. And that's because I don't want y'all to be nosy. Yeah. And I also feel like if I say too much, that all the negativity will start to pile on me, but I'm not gonna speak it into existence. I'ma just tell y'all that much. And that's okay, because I'm still standing in front of you today. Hey, Funny Pals doing this, y'all girl does. And today, I wanted to talk a little bit about how horses function, because not gonna lie, I hate that over the many, many, three years, I'll be telling people, yeah, I'm like probably one of the better people you can go to, not because I have a narcissistic problem. Um, that's just more um, a manifestation technique I got. But coming to me, you guys should feel a lot more safe. I understand like we don't know each other personally, but I can honestly say that I will try to do the best I can to update y'all and provide y'all with all the links, the research, how to do it yourself. And the problem is, is that I'm really not, I'm not. No, I am who I say, but am I doing what I say? Not really. And I'm getting started with this one because, again, it was kind of hard because a lot of people would say, oh, what are some things that are normalized in horse culture that shouldn't be anymore? Or where are the flaws or here and there? It's kind of hard to figure out what exactly y'all want because not only is that a broad statement, but it's hard to not talk about stuff that is more trivial, things that you know you as an unknowing viewer would be like, oh, I heard that horseshoes don't hurt. And then I gotta like go in and be like, yes, they don't hurt. That's just regurgitating information that just about a majority of equestrians know. Y'all asking me these narrow questions who honestly have a broad um, reach. Is that the right way I'm putting it? I don't know. Overall, I'm just saying that as someone who has owned horses her whole life, like literally, Peanut, y'all remember him? Peanut was never out of my life. That little sucker was there before I was. And you see, I was raised by him. So it's a little hard to pick apart exactly where people get messed up at. Cause you know, it's a little easier. Like if you're newly into horses or if you're like my age and you're 10 years into horses, you can be like, oh yeah, well I remember when I first learned about horses like this versus me where it was every life lesson I learned. So, I don't know, I don't know girl. But this video, we're gonna talk about exactly why horses do the things that they do. And I'm talking about it in a more neural sensory type of way. And for y'all that don't know, I'm basically just breaking down the five senses of horses, you know, sight, smell, touch, hearing, taste. I always forget taste. But we're gonna go through those five senses for horses and I know some of y'all gonna get bored like I know the five senses well. I'm telling you the five senses in the way that it contributes to a horse. But probably somewhere in this video, I'm gonna say something. It's gonna feel like someone could read your mind or they, uh, you know, one of the clairvoyant people at church because my mom told me about them like this morning. But, oh yeah, she said that my horse doesn't go into the tree. That scared me. Oh, you might be watching and I'll say, oh, horses do this because their bodies naturally react like that. And you're like, wow, I didn't notice. And it gets you to be a little bit more empathetic towards these animals because again, with just natural traditional horsemanship mindsets going, we tend to forget that these creatures are not what we as humans have painted them out to be. So I hope that this video not only gives you guys some insight, but some answers, some clarification. Now I'm not entirely sure if this is gonna work, but I do wanna start out when I do videos like this breaking down about how horses perceive the world and how they learn. I want you to erase everything that you could possibly know about horses, erase it all. Because like I said, we people, we tended to paint horses in a certain picture that fits for us. Like, oh, they're a little nasty turd. Oh, they're just a drama queen. Or oh, they're just so I don't know what else. I was trying to say something positive. More people say negative than positive about their horses and it'd always be the people on the wrong side of horsemanship. But I want you to clear all those conceptions. You could possibly anything, like literally anything you think about horses. And I think the best reset button for you to actually get into your horse's head, you're no longer dealing with the horse. Imagine a little bunny, a little tiny bunny. Horses used to be bunnies one point but 
Just imagine a little bunny on its four legs. It's a prey animal, it's, so it's in fear all the time. And rabbits, they tend to not want to be around people. And we can understand for that, that they're shy, anxious little creatures who are set off by loud noises and quick movements. They're always vigilant, all of that. Like just imagine a horse as a bunny. It doesn't have an attitude, none of that. It's just a scared little bunny. And now I'm gonna take y'all to church real quick. All right, so we cleared the mind. We think horses are bunnies. We see them as bunnies. And as I've said before, bunnies are prey animals, and so are horses. And one thing that prey animals tend to have are eyes that are positioned on the sides of their heads. And it's kind of fun to look once you notice this observation where prey animals have their eyes on the sides of their heads versus predators who have their eyes right in front of them. The reason being is like predators, for the most layman of terms or layman of explanations predators need to lock in they need to have that mono vision like girl i see you i'm stalking you i'm finna get you and predators for the most part do not need to worry about other predators you know what i mean like they're they're not thinking about oh snap i need to be on i'll take serena see I just did something that a prey does, but hold on. So predators, they be looking, they be just be like, oh, I need to lock down because I don't need to be worrying about really anybody because I'm the baddest to be feared in the sky, right? Versus a prey animal where their eyes are on the side of their heads so they can see not in, not really well in front of them, just a little sliver is missing. But other than that, they see everywhere around their body because they're literally on the bottom of the food chain. There could be a predator literally anywhere, so you gotta watch where you are. And so that's why they have them eyes on the side of their head. And as you have noticed, horses have some pretty big, big old eyes, huge eyes at that. And that's to help them scope out them predators. In fact, as you probably have noticed, Horses' pupils are shaped as a rectangle, and that's so that they can see more horizontally because they be scoping out for predators versus vertically, they're not really looking up and down. They're looking more side to side, like where is you at? Where are you going? Where you be? And another thing is that color, it's not a really big deal for horses, it really ain't. They're dichromatic and they can see in bluish or yellowish hues. So that's gonna be a big deal when you're training horses. If you use like some type of uh, marker system or you know, some of those people who try to train the horse like, oh, you need to pick up the color blue and you know, they're doing like little training stuff like that. Try to use bluish, white, or yellowish hues because that those are the colors the horse sees the best. Everything else is pretty much nothing. Have you ever noticed when your horse is running and it wants to look at something, it tends to have its head way up high? Or if it's crossing a bridge, it kind of arches its neck and looks way down there. That all has to do with how they see objects. Horses happen to be farsighted, which means they see objects that are further out versus like way close in, but they have 20, 30 vision, which means that a horse could see what they can see that's 20 feet away, a person can see 30 feet away, which definitely explains um, not just so much like why a horse lifts its head up when it's looking at something, but if something is like an object that's really close, your horse, will try to get down here, like if they're not afraid of it, but they'll try to look at it real close because they can't see really well. And that's also a reason why horses kind of jump out of the way when something spooks them like a plastic bag. They're getting away not only just because they're prey animals and they're meant to be flighty and they're supposed to jump around, but if something close jumps up at them, they can't see it. So they're trying to get away, to not only get away from the danger, but for their brain to be, f or their eyes to be far enough to be like, okay, I'm going to figure out what that is. Do I know, is my brain computing? This could be a plastic bag, could be a dangerous Pokemon. But either way, that's what the horse's brain is doing. So it's not just because they're being a jerk and being stupid and jumping out of random stuff. We were like, well, you know what a plastic bag is. You, we've desensitized you. You should be over this. It's literally just because 
the horse cannot see it. It's something that jumped out of them. They literally cannot see it. And their first response as a fly animal is to get away from it because it could be a possible threat. When they're far away from it and they're at a distance because you know they're farsighted, they see far out, they get away from the thing and they're like, oh, it is a plastic bag. Let me calm down real quick. And then you return to work. Another thing about horses is that light control is everything. They generally like lower lighting. In a study, they've shown that they, horses like lighting daylight times when it's between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. Because, you know, later on in the day, it gets super bright. They tend to like low lighting due to like the little photoreceptors and numbers of rods and cones in their eyes. But the most important part, you guys want to hear this one. The most important part is that horses need, they want, they need gradual light changes and the difference for them to like kind of settle when there is a light change is 30 minutes. They cannot do contrast. And the reason why I want y'all to know is because trailers, trailering issues. So we can agree, probably most of us, that trailering four horses can be very scary. And some of us get confused like, well, they loaded this day, but not that day. Or why are they doing all this and blah, da, 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 da. Believe it or not, not I, I know other people have said, you know, horses think of it as like a death trap because it's dark. It's the lighting change. It's literally the lighting change. Believe it or not, I know it's gonna be crazy, but we can't be people interpreting this. We have to be horses. The lightness from wherever environment they are and then going into the darkness, that messes them up a little bit. Of course, there's some other factors where it's like, you know, horses are animals of space wanting space and going into a trailer is not it's not very space thumb it's not pro space but the lighting difference between the environment and the trailer definitely affects your horses and the same thing goes for texture which is why you may notice like sometimes you have horses that are on grass and then you try to walk them in the street and they're like looking at the street and like snorting at it and it's not because they've never seen a street before and of course horses there are horses that like get over it but it's the contrast of textures, big old texture changes. They don't like those either. I'll say ahead right now, vision for horses is like the top. It's not the most dominant because they are pretty um, multimodal when it comes to um, sensory perception, but vision has, has to be the top. I mean, it gets helps from everything else, but they definitely, they, they, I know it says they're not dominant in it, but vision plays a bigger part of the whole uh, sensory pie if you will so whatever your horse be seeing y'all gotta give it some grace because that's what's been keeping them alive for years now when it comes to hearing horses can hear between 55 Hertz to 33.5 Hertz 55 Hertz is like the sound check that's like that low rumbling noise when you hear just mm, versus 33 hertz, that's when your TV is like frozen and it's loud and annoying and it's like nah! Yeah, so horses can hear that range, um, but their best sensitivity is between one and 16 hertz and that's because normal horse vocalizations tend to fall around that range. One of the first things I stated was that horses got these big ol' eyes, but unfortunately, if it has big ol' eyes, its sound localization is not gonna be very good. And what that means is that maybe the horse sees a little flicker of something, like it just flashes and they're looking, and then maybe there's a sound going off. But the thing is is that they have a really hard time figuring out where sounds come from. They can have a good guess, they can figure it out, but like real, like being like a dog where dogs can probably hear everything and then just go off to it, horses can't do that. They tripping, they have no idea, they just, sitting there trying to figure it out, heart palpitating and everything. Next up we have smell and boy are those big old olfactory bulbs big because they are y'all. I know y'all seen them nostrils. They gots to have them and they do. And the thing with horses is that they can use smell to distinguish a wider range of things than what I initially thought growing up. Now Shavalsky horses they've seen tend to sniff the genitals of a stranger versus domesticated horses where they tend to sniff the noses and the bodies. That's not something big, I just thought I'd throw that in there. And also while I'm on top of it, and this also me admitting to y'all, I don't know admitting's the right word, but I'm admitting to y'all that I really do be trying to be staying on top of these studies. 
I'm not entirely sure. I know it was yesterday, but the thing was is that I'm in California and I was impaired when I read this, so I'm not entirely sure, but I think they're finding out, they may have found out that Shavalskis are not the true wild horse anymore. They see some domesticated horses in there and like part of me is like, well, yeah, I think because of a breed or not a breed, but a species that literally almost died out and there was like 13 of them, I would think there's some domestication in there. But yeah, I, I don't know, girl. You can figure out a lot of things from smell when it comes to horses. Horses can find out um, like what the sex of a horse is or like what stage of estrus they are um, from urine samples. They can also tell when the feces that's on the ground comes from a different herd, which is probably why um, horses, when you're out on the trail or whatever and they see another horse poop pile, they really go out to sniff it. Whether or not it was a horse that they know or not, they're gonna try and sniff it because they're gonna find. Cause low key, that's kind of like a safety thing too. Cause if it's not, oh, there's a, a band up here that's not with mine, I better stay vigilant. But also, oh, this might be a safe area because yeah, the band's here or maybe my friend left it there and they're here. So this might be a safe area. I might be okay. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm just putting that thought into y'all heads. Maybe that could be something. It wasn't concluded in any of the medical behavior books that I've been reading, but the, I'm just, I'm just putting that in there. It's okay to throw some things in there. You gotta agree. It's just some thinking points. But in that same thought, they can also smell when a predator is around. And what that does is that it doesn't put them into this anxiety induced, oh, 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 oh. No, they just go about their business. But the vigilance, the vigilance be right there. It's, it's a little more heightened. Oh, I also forgot to mention, Yes, you know, like domesticated horses, how they usually touch noses or sniff the bodies of the other horses, like the stranger horses. Geldings and stallions tend to want to roll in places that other horses have rolled. Again, it wasn't concluded that this could have been like a scent marking thing. I was naturally brought up like, oh, it was like a safety thing or not a safety thing, but oh, this is obviously a good spot because so-and-so itched here. I don't know, that wasn't concluded, but that might be a reason why your gelding stallion, maybe even your mare, maybe even your mare does it. Why horses tend to want to roll in the same places. It's either scent marking or it's like, oh, this is a good spot. I know this gonna get exactly what I want because so-and-so was here. Y'all know when horses be curling their ears whenever they like smell something or whatever, that's called the Fleming response. And that is a secondary olfactory response. Um, it definitely decreases after castration, but like you'll see foals do this with their mothers or um, stallions or geldings even um, when they're sniffing a mare out who's probably in heat um, or any horse that smells a tree. Really, the gist of it is I like that smell. I'm gonna use my lip to kind of act as like a, um, I was gonna say as a push, it is. My lip is going to metaphorically and kind of legitimately, because that's why it exists, push the scent back, force it into my nose, and I'm gonna sniff it, I'm gonna And my brain's gonna try and compute what the smell is, and then I'm gonna give out the response that it elicits. But yeah, that's basically what's happening. Crazy enough, horse taste buds do not renew. So if they didn't like it back then, they're probably not gonna like it right now. Horses tend to taste in two different flavors. It's either sugary or it's salty. If it's sugary, usually the horse might give like a little head bob, it got a little forward ear movement, maybe a little tongue protrusion like, mm. but yeah, that's sweet to them. And if it's more salty, and salty tends to be a little bit more bitter, they might have their head extended, there's more backward-ish ear movement, the tongue is like, out and his mouth maybe gaping open. Yeah, it's a little bitter. You know, they, these are different. This doesn't mean that it's always bad. They just taste salty and sweet because obviously they like salt. That's why we have salt blocks. Yeah, they like it. it I think I think I'm just reiterating because I was like backward ear movement. I'm just saying ears up here and ears back here. Remember this bad. This mean ears. This this ain't nothing. This is just environment. Anyways, um. <laughs> Now, if they don't like it and they reject it, that's because there is either super high concentrations of the sucrose, the sugar, or super high concentrations of the salt that, or like the bitterness. So if your horse don't like it, 
It's probably too sugary, too salty, or it's meat because it was never meant to be in their body systems. I'm just giving you like the simple stuff, but I don't know. I feel like some people like to play dumb games with me. The last part I'm gonna talk to y'all is about touch. And let me tell y'all, horses can feel everything. Everything, everything. And I say that with so much Mm, gumption in my heart is because we tend to put cutesy little words or cutesy little um, situations when we get horses into things that we want them to do. Like for starters, main pulling. Do I think it's the cruelest thing in the world? No, I don't think you should be sent to jail for that. I don't think you're this evil person. But should you acknowledge that you're tearing hair out of something? Yes. Yes, you should. Or when we give even slappity slap slaps. Now I'm not talking about a full fist, but even just a quit it. And then we're just like, oh no, it's fine. Because in both factors of either main pulling or slapping the horse, the animal is big. The reason why people think they could do more, um, Spankity spank feelings on horses is because they're big. You're justifying you can hit or harm something because it's big. And to take it a step further, well, some people will say, well, yeah, they're big and they can't feel it. Can they? Can they really? Can they really not feel it? And I'm saying this like genuinely, if you are a bigger person and you think about this, like you think like this, does it, does pulling your hair hurt more when you're smaller or if you're a bigger person or does it hurt all around? Right? That'd be like us justifying hitting bigger people because they can take it because they're bigger. That don't make sense. I'm also trying to make sure that y'all know that I'm not coming up from malicious state. I'm not talking out of fat phobia. I'm not talking about body image or stuff like that. Like this is coming from my genuine heart because I do believe that a lot of people, they need to be inserted in there. Like a lot of problems in society that we're trying to fix in general, there's a problem with people inserting themselves and then just deflecting. I'm forcefully inserting yourself in the specific scenario I'm giving you so you could like wake up and use that information in the way that it should be. Correct it. But touch is a really big deal. As you guys may have noticed that horses have what's called, I almost said sheet metal, but sheet muscle. And basically when you like just watch your horse and like a leaf falls or a bug falls, you notice that a horse tends to twitch the exact muscle space region that the thing has fallen on it to. So how could it not feel you pulling on its mane? How could it not feel you slapping it? If it can feel a little tiny leaf or a little tiny bug like a fly land on it and it can pinpoint exactly which area it landed on and then twitch that muscle. How does that happen? How sway? So we covered all of their five senses. We touched more on vision because they're like pretty big on vision, but it's not the most dominant thing because they need to depend on all of their other little senses in order to figure stuff out. Because as we had said before, these are prey animals. And as prey animals, they have to be constantly vigilant. So not only with their eyes, they gotta smell it. They gotta try and hear it. They can't pinpoint places exactly, but they're gonna try because they can try it by looking with their eyes, looking with their ears, <laughs> trying to figure it out what they smell. Maybe there's a little touch. The touch is probably gonna freak them out. But that's what kept horses alive. That's what has kept horses alive and continues to still do it. And I think that's crazy and amazing that, well, first of all, horses know that we're not horses. They can tell. You notice how sometimes when you put your horse with like sheep and goats or cattle and they've probably never been with them before, they're a little bit more like cooler with them versus, I don't know, what other predator, like your dog or you, they don't warm up to you and your dog really quickly. That's because they, not only do they not, or they know that we are not horses, but our eyes are in front of us. We are obviously built as predators and they're just so cool. They're so cool, or they try to be cool with us as prey animals. They, 
Like I, all the little motion sensor stuff I just talked to y'all about, those were things to keep them moving, running, getting them staying alive for all these years, running from predators. And then, like 5,000 years ago, they were like, let's give these predators a try. They don't really be, I don't think they're that bad. And then they just be hanging out with us. They just be hanging out with us. It's a little hard to breed out um, instinctual things. And I hope that you guys hearing about the reasons why your horse probably does these things are all instinct. This is not their temperament. This is not their personality. This is not them planning to get at you or trying to be stupid. It's literally their survival instincts that are at play. And that's why I ask you guys to be a little more gentler with them because this is not, like I said, them getting back at you, trying to be difficult. They are trying to survive because that's all horses know how to do is try to survive. Before I end this off, cause I almost ended it right here, but you also have to know that the inputs from like all the senses, it could totally depend on different factors. It's like quoted as mood, but you'll kind of get what I, like it's the different factors like, What's the environment like? What's the time of day? Um, uh, let me look at my notebook. What was it again? Yeah, previous experiences. Maybe that's why your horse who was like abused earlier is like not so good right now is because they're like, well, I was in a round pen once. Ducati, Ducati. Ducati was a great horse. He is, but he was great in the round pen. Great little pony. I send him off somewhere. His past experience was good, but now it was tainted because someone decided to whip him in a round pen. And now I can't put him in a round pen without him thinking he has to fear for his life because of that past experience. So that, yeah, how, how they grew up and how they were introduced to some things really like does a lot. It does a lot of damage. You can try to undo it. You may not be able to fully undo it, but there's reasons why. And also another one is weather. Yo, that's why people say, oh, well, horses get a little fresh when it's windy. Y'all, they're confused. They're so confused. The wind is swirling up the scent, so they can't get a clear scent on anything. Not only that, things are moving. And since things are moving, you know, they're already looking at it, it's making noise. And they're just like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? What can I do? I can't figure it out. And then everything is touching them and then they either jump or they don't because it all depends on all these little factors that are constantly playing. All these senses, all these environmental factors and past learning factors is what makes the horse what it is. And I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. And I definitely think it's beautiful when we work with them instead of working against them. So, Maybe think about that the next time you think your horse is getting trying to get back at you or trying to be mean. It's just literally trying to survive. That poor little bunny pony is trying to survive. Anyways, y'all, that's all I got to tell y'all about all these little neural and sensory organ. I almost said that word, but yeah. Anywho, my name is Desmond Washington, and I hope to catch y'all view on a different video on a different day.